Coming up, Sanyong versus the truth about towing three and a half tons with a new Sanyong Musso. Spoiler alert, it kind of sucks to an unacceptably high degree in my view. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. <laughs> for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Or you can simply click the card which Cyclone Tiffany blew all the way up there, dude. You Queenslanders, right? Tiffany goes on holiday once a year. It's incredible. She's hell on heels, that woman. I do hope she comes home soon. And doubtless you've had enough also. Thank the Lord in a parallel universe, perhaps. Certainly in his own mind. But thank the Lord for LDV, right? Otherwise, Sanyong would be a shoe-in for crap car maker of the year 2022. Only LDV and... Of course, Land Rover and Jeep and Jaguar, Fiat, Volvo, three-prong Audi, Volkswagen and Ford stand between Sanyong and crap car maker gold. Yes, the Aussie market's so damn competitive. I do honestly wonder who buys Sanyongs. If you're thinking about buying one, you're sitting there tossing the coin metaphorically, here's what you need to know about Sanyong. What we know today is Sanyong actually kicked off as two separate companies in South Korea established in the 1950s and 1960s. The Dong Huan Motor Workshop and the Dong Bang Motor Company. I'm not making that up. It's how they started and I'm sensing a theme here. I would have actually kept the name Dong Bang. I like that one. Imagine being the CEO of that. Executive Director of Human Resources at Dong Bang, or perhaps Vice President of External Affairs, something of that nature. That's a career. But they became, ultimately, the absurdly spelled Sanyong, and they've been taken over by everyone, it seems. GM Korea, Ni Daewoo, Shanghai Auto Investment, Mahindra and Mahindra. And they've had five or six different cracks at Shitsville too, all of which, except this current one, which is in the pending tray, ended in tears, okay? They're South Korea's fourth largest car maker, incredibly enough, but they've been repeatedly crap at managing their business and thus they have always teetered on the brink. They actually filed for bankruptcy. Finally, in December of 2020, the South Korean government could simply not afford the flak, which would flow from Sanyong relocating suddenly to the bottom of the Marianas Trench, so the government bailed it out. Much like the, the way the American government gave GM and Chrysler such a tender reach around when they went tits up following the GFC just after that notorious jet pooling scandal. Way back, do you remember that? Anyway, now Sanyong is slated to be sold to some no-name EV startup, which is actually called Edison Motors. And I would have gone with Dong Hung. That would have kicked a goal. Check out me new Dong Hung. In other words, it took the South Korean government about 10 months to find a corporation stupid enough to buy Sanyong, even at the current rate of pennies on the dollar, I'd be pleasantly surprised if Edison can unfuck them, but I doubt they can. And here we are, all caught up with you perhaps still thinking that buying one is a plausible idea for your heavy towing assignment. Throughout this tumultuous time, of course, Sanyong Shitsville's official line has been, well, dude, that's over there. It's business as usual down here. And if you believe that, hey... Tiffany just wanted a quiet holiday in the sun and things got out of hand. She didn't really expect to blow the roof off so many times. It just kind of happened around her. She's like that. It's important that you know this stuff about Sanyong, dude, because if you've got 50 grand to slap down on the table for a tow platform, this is kind of stuff you need to consider for risk management. 
Because if you think a bankrupt car maker, which has failed here previously multiple times, if you think a company like this has excess cash to splash on things like warranty, parts, customer support, giving you the benefit of the doubt, I'll send Tiffany over to your place for some roof off F-U-N. The new Musso, which has obviously been to a, uh, well, discount dentist, has two redeeming features which are spruiked nauseatingly and endlessly by Sanyong's official marketing bullshit. Number one is it's Australia's only dual cab ute with a seven year warranty and it's good to tow up to three and a half tonnes every day of the week. Oh dear. And it's good to tow up to three and a half tonnes every day of the week. Really. I'm not accusing them of lying about this, let's be perfectly clear. The vehicle can tow up to three and a half tonnes, and it would be amusing indeed if they said, but only on Thursday and Sunday afternoons between two and four. Like, I don't see the relevant of days of the week, except, of course, in the context of advertising masturbation. I'm accusing them of being unprincipled, disingenuous, weapons-grade bullshitters about towing. Guided by Professor Frankfurt's definition on bullshit here, it's not the same thing as lying, don't get me wrong. Such a relevant book for our world and our time. Link in the description. If you haven't read it, do so. It will change your life. It certainly changed mine. Sanyong is up this bloody three and a half ton tow capacity like the proverbial rat up the downpipe. The Musso makes light work of hauling a large caravan, boat or work trailer. The EXDI turbo diesel engine is able to tow a massive 3.5 ton. That's serious pulling power. Yes, it is, but I'm pretty sure there is even more pulling power in the marketing department. No reference to individuals is made. Because here's what happens when you hook your new $50,000 Musso to your new $100,000 <laughs> ton acoustically transparent aluminium shit and you head off with Beryl to live the grey nomad beard stroking cellulite hot pants dream en route, so to speak, to Dingo Piss Creek. Bear in mind, of course, that I already consider this undertaking to be an irrevocable and indefensible utter breakdown of rational thought. Mainly because you could stay in a 500 buck a night accommodation somewhere in multiple different places for two fucking years for what you just spent on your crapper wagon combo. And not once would you be taking a dump simultaneously at arm's length from both the dining table and the kitchen if you go with what's behind door B. I'm told that some people enjoy what's behind door A, of course. I just don't get that. Now, I had a careful look at Sanyong's website, Sanyong Shitsville's website even, just for disambiguation, and I could find no detailed specifications on the Musso. I did have a proper look, too. In my view, this is a comprehensive fail by them because these data are kind of essential to make sure about the 3.5 tonne tow business in the granular detail domain and whether this suits your application. And after looking at this, odds on, dude, it doesn't if you want to tow 3.5 tonnes. In the absence of official data from Sanyong on the Shitsville website, I went to Redbook and that's where the data I'm about to use came from. My understanding is that Redbook sources its data directly from the manufacturers. Anyway, that's the basis for the following assessment, okay? I'm using the data for the pimped up Ultimate Luxury Auto Musso and not the stretched XLV one, just the standard sized one, okay? And the first thing I did was a GVM analysis. I got the gross vehicle mass, which is 2,880 kilos, and I subtracted the curb weight of 2,256, which is the vehicle empty but with a full tank of fuel and no accessories and no people on board. 
And then I subtracted the tow ball download, which I'm ballparking at the maximum of 350 kilos, which is 10% of the three and a half ton aggregate trailer mass limit, which is where you want to be on download for maximum dynamic stability. The tow ball download absolutely goes into a GVM analysis because the vehicle is carrying the download. Therefore, it is part of the GVM. And when you do that, that analysis, you crunch those numbers, you are left with just 274 kilos of remaining payload. Now, if this is mum, dad, two kids, they're going on some grand effluent transporting dump from the dinner table, dingo, piss creek, COVID-19 pandemic adventure, you are already overloaded with just the people and some light gear on board the vehicle. Let's just let that sink in, shall we? That's before you fit a bull bar or a roof rack or a hard tonneau cover or lights or recovery gear or tools. Like, dude, you have to fit a tow bar and that's got to be 40 kilos out of the 274. It's not like the vehicle comes with a tow bar standard. It's depicted on their website as a clean skin from the rear in all of their marketing bullshit shots. The tow bar is therefore an accessory, so it is not included in the curb weight. So, <coughs> I think you'd agree, that's quite limiting, isn't it? It's good to tow up to three and a half tonnes every day of the week. However, this situation gets even worse when you do the other critical towing mass analysis the gross combination mass, the GCM. This, of course, is the maximum allowable mass of the combined fully loaded vehicle and the fully loaded caravan, boat, trailer, whatever. So according to Red Bull, the GCM limit on the Musso is 5,880 kilos. And if you get the van at three and a half tons, like 3,500 kilos, and the curb weight of the Musso at 2,256, and you take both of these away from the 5,880 limit, you are left with just 124 kilos of payload to play with. Pro tip on this, okay? You don't treat tow ball downloads separately in a GCM analysis because it's an internal load, right? There's no need to count it twice, in other words. Now, I have seen some people towing vans who make Jabba the friggin' Hut look skinny. They can only dream of getting back down to 124 kilos. Like, dude, must have overdone it on the salad. Perhaps the broccoli. And I've always loved the Brussels sprouts. It's just my sluggish metabolism. So there's that. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to highlight the spectacular fucking absurdity of Sanyong's claim that quote. It's good to tow up to three and a half tonnes every day of the week. So let's drill down into this, shall we? Let's ballpark the tow bar at 40 kilos. Actually, fuck it. Let's be terribly generous and make it 30. 124 minus 30 kilos is 94 kilos of remaining payload when you fit a tow bar and couple up your three and a half tonne six-figure septic tank on wheels. That's no other accessories, dude. And before anyone climbs aboard, including you, and certainly not your lovely wife, all not to exceed 94 kilos in total, right? Good fucking luck with that. According to the ABS, the average Schittsvillian dude weighs 86 kilos. So if you are Mr. Avarage, you climb aboard, right? And then you've got just eight fucking kilos of whatever the hell you want to add to the vehicle before you are overloaded by virtue of breaching the gross combination mass limit. That's ridiculous. Absurdly, intelligence-insultingly ridiculous. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to hook up the van and wave bye-bye to Lorraine and Chantel and little Muzzer and Wazza, the twins, and head off on the big lap of our fine nation solo, towing your three-and-a-half-ton monument to your own effluent. Actually, if you did that, you'd be doing them a favour, wouldn't you? 
They don't want to come. They don't want a bar of this towing bullshit. They're just humouring you because you're in charge. They want to lie around the pool and drink friggin' cocktails with civilised little bamboo umbrellas in them and a lot of fruit and take a dump in a bathroom that doesn't also feel like a coffin. In my estimation, the hidden specifications, right? That's indefensible. Like, I had to go outside Sanyong Shitsville to find them and I had to know where to look just to acquire that data. Plus the absurdly compromised payload when you actually tow three and a half tonnes together with the endless marketing pro voiceover push on this absurd tow capacity claim. Combined, these things lay the foundation for an entirely false expectation in the mind of a buyer, potentially friggin' you. It's good to tow up to three and a half tonnes every day of the week. So I can see you sitting there watching ads like that and fantasising about getting the death wobbles in your acoustically transparent aluminium chitois. You see that ad and you go to the website and you see and hear, quote, every day of the week and, quote, making light work of hauling a large caravan and, quote, serious pulling power. And I could see you legitimately forming the view that towing three and a half tonnes with a musso is trivial, mundane, effortless, practical, doable kind of undertaking. And au contraire. I'd suggest. I could also see you legitimately forming the good faith view that you might reasonably tow three and a half tons with the family or just Tiffany and her equipment and a bull bar and some gear in the tray, one of those little fold out awnings on the roof rack, like towing with people and normal stuff around the vehicle. If you don't know what you don't know, that seems reasonable as propositions go and as the messaging is being transmitted to you by them. Now, if that's what you want to do, if that's what you end up attempting, then three and a half tons plus family plus some accessories plus a few personal effects plus some tools, that is dangerous and illegal because you are overloaded. You are putting everyone at risk. And I know I try and joke about this stuff, but that is quite serious. The risk to your family and, of course, all the other nearby road users whenever you are turning and burning. And this is therefore a $50,000 mistake if that is your objective, to tow three and a half tons and put the family on board. And I can certainly see how you got there based on what you inferred from claims made endlessly in Sanyong's marketing bullshit about the vehicle's capabilities and the selective inaccessibility of the critical specifications required for you to cross-check the data. It's pretty clear to me that corporate lawyers are slimy vermin generally, and I'm pretty sure that they could defend these claims in court because you can actually tow three and a half tons with a musso, and it really doesn't matter what fucking day of the week you attempt to do it, does it? It's irrelevant. As long as it ends in why, dude, that's going to be fine. What matters, at least in my estimation, and call me old-fashioned, is the absurd operational compromise that goes hand-in-hand hand with towing three and a half tonnes using this vehicle, and others like it, let's not forget. Now, I'm no lawyer, thank Christ, and I don't therefore know what the legal definition of misleading and deceptive conduct actually is, what the standard of legal proof is to achieve that determination in a court, right? So I'm not going there, but if we went down to the pub together and laid this all out on some friggin' whiteboard, do you think that ordinary people would consider the claims made by Sanyong about towing with a musso to be generally misleading and deceptive? I think they probably would. Do you think that ordinary people would perhaps expect the ACCC to wake the fuck up and do something about it? I think they probably would. Do you suppose the ACCC will, in fact, wake up? Jury's obviously still out on that one. They are getting better at waking up, incidentally, but still, if they were working for you down at the corner shop, then you'd have to let them go based on their spectacular track record of narcolepsy-driven absenteeism. Like, 
They're consistent. And finally, shame on you, Sanyong, for your epic bullshit claims and implicit seeming misrepresentations about towing three and a half tons with this vehicle. The reality is three and a half tons is doable, but it is completely impractical. The fact that they are even allowed to make claims of this nature is, in my estimation, disgraceful. 